Rengar Mid, a champion who literally relies on bushes to win games, in a lane that practically has no bushes, other than these which are too far away. But I have found a player named Bushless Rengar, who clearly doesn't care about this, because he hit Master Tier with Rengar Mid, and he did this using a special wave clearing supportive Rengar build. His build and runes are all about keeping him alive in lane, as well as pushing the wave as quickly as possible, and these two things together fix all of Rengar Mid's problems, turning him from from an immobile, low-range mid laner into a monster of roaming. Bushless Rengar is even happy to play teamfights without bushes, having new strategies to get jumps even when there are no bushes around. And unlike normal damage-based Rengar, he even has a special build with Zonya's and Anathema's chains, so he can focus on wasting the enemy's time. Let me show you how he does it. But first, let me tell you about this week's sponsor, War Thunder. War Thunder is a free-to-play military vehicle combat game with online multiplayer. It has huge battles, land, air, and sea, on over a hundred maps that are based on actual battlefields from World War II through to the Cold War. They have historically accurate drivable tanks, aircraft, helicopters and ships. So whether you want to fly a plane from World War II or even a modern day jet, War Thunder has you covered and it's even being updated constantly with new ones. Even this month they added new tanks, helicopters and even drones. And if you're sick of playing multiplayer games, War Thunder even has single player solo missions, letting you travel back in time to take part in historical battles. This game's really easy to jump into as a new player, the controls are really intuitive, but it also has some very cool in-depth systems, like the vehicle damage system, it lets you see exactly which part of the enemy you hit, where your shell went, maybe it pierced through their armour and hit the engine, or even exploded inside and hit the driver, it's really impressive. So if you want to join some of these epic battles, then please click the link in the description, download War Thunder and also get an exclusive bonus for using my code. Thanks so much to them for sponsoring. Back to our player, Bushless Rengar and his Rengar Mir. His story with Rengar started in Season 6. At the time, he was actually a full AP Varus player, one-shotting people with the arrow and having a great time. Strangely, I guess Rengar was his next one-shotting champion, swapping to top lane and playing the champion there. He loved this role because of how he could outplay people with all of these jumps, not letting the enemy top lane have any fun. Over the next few seasons, he actually climbed to high elo with Rengar top. It was all going so well until the start of Season 12. As soon as the year started, Riot Nerf teleports. This was when they added Unleashed Teleport, making it so you could only TP to towers before 14 minutes. And because of this, top laners can't really join any fights before this time. Some players were happy with the change, mostly AD carries, and some hated it, players like our Rengar. Before this change, Rengar was a great early fighter, who could teleport bot lane with his ferocity stacks and easily get kills. But after the change, he could no longer affect the map and collect all these kills which Rengar loves, so he pretty much lost the main use of Rengar. He couldn't 1v9 carry carry the game if he was stuck top lane in a 1 vs 1, so he needed a new role. Jungle was an okay option, but he said that when playing in high elo, Rengar is very snowball-y, always great when you're ahead, but one mistake and your game is pretty much over. So he had to think about mid lane, surely it just wasn't possible, there were no bushes to jump around in, and this was Rengar's biggest strength in top. Most of his passive would be completely useless, it would be harder to trade with ranged champions, harder to CS against all their poke, and he had zero wave clear so wouldn't he just get pushed in every game? game. It sounds quite impossible, but underneath all of this he did see one positive. Rengar in mid lane would have really good room potential after level 6 with his ultimate. Mid lane is at the centre of the map, in the middle of all the action, so his room potential is unlimited. So if our player could find a way to survive early game then this role might actually be better, having much easier matchups than top, and a shorter lane, so enemies would have a much harder time freezing against him. So right away he started working on a build and runes to make this happen, to turn him from a high damage assassin into into an unkillable, healing, damage avoiding mid laner that really doesn't care about the enemy. After a few months of practice and testing, in August he hit master with this playstyle, perfecting what I would call Brick Wall Rengar, who is happy to face any matchup. This starts at level 1 with his items, starting Doran Shield, an obvious choice to regenerate health every time he gets hit. This isn't very common in mid lane, but it's incredibly effective against poke champions, so it's the perfect option for this pick. At level 1 his goal is to take you and not take any damage. Damage. He would love to get some CS if the enemy lets him, but he must give it up to ensure he has full health at level 2. At level 2 he gets his W, his next tool for sustain. His W is his main healing, as well as wave clear because of the AoE, and also safety from ganks because of the cleanse. It is vital for this strategy and he puts 3 points into it early on. Rengar can now walk up to the wave, using his W to collect some CS, as well as to undo some of the poke he takes. This ability stores grey health when he takes damage, so he can use it to regen 
50% of the damage taken in the last trade. So effectively, Rengar's health bar is much bigger than enemies expect. Level 3, Rengar takes E, and here is his final tool for sustain, Fleet Footwork. Procking it over and over again on minions, topping up on health as much as he can. With all of these tools, even in the worst range matchups, Rengar doesn't really care about the damage he's taking. Our player positions well, and regenerates health whenever he's hit, making him very hard to punish. The fleet is also really good for trades, as it gives movement speed. So since Rengar mid has no dashes, he relies on the speed to outplay people. For every trade, he moves in, does damage, and then when his fleet is ready to proc, he knows it's time for the trade to end and for him to leave, using the bonus 20% movement speed to get a speed advantage over the enemy mid, stopping them from chasing you with extra poke. And on top of this, every time he uses an empowered ability, he gets 30% more movement speed, so he really zooms away before enemies can return damage. The one big advantage Rengar mid has is that compared to most meta mid laners, he doesn't have any mana. Instead, he has his endless ferocity stacks. So this role is all about how you use these stacks. Most of the time, having empowered W is the best, because this gives you wave clear as well as a trade on the enemy. Your other main option is using empowered Q to get a good trade in melee range, or even just to get CS. Around this point in the game, finally Rengar gets some help, being able to base and start buying his wave clear items. For his first base, Dark Seal is a good option. Rengar W scales with AP, so this will empower his wave clear very early on, but Tiamat or Iron Spike Whip are his next best options. Now that Rengar can finally start pushing waves, he's escaped the hardest parts of the game. He teleports back to mid lane and easily pushes the wave against pretty much every mid laner, finally now being able to roam. He buys a sweeper and starts clearing wards in the river to give him a runway straight to top or bot lane. Getting ult at level 6, he's happiest roaming to bot lane, having his invisibility, speed and the jump to gap close onto squishy enemies and start winning their lane. Interestingly, he doesn't really want the kills. His goal is to get his bot lane super far ahead so they can win their lane, rotate mid and start taking over the game. But for now, Rengar keeps managing mid wave and going for these roams, even helping his jungler to invade. Mid lane is the hardest lane to freeze, which is useful for an immobile champion like Bushless Rengar, but his early game is not weak. If the enemy mid freezes, he can easily walk into the enemy jungle and look for a kill on them instead, since he's going to be higher level. Unfortunately, occasionally he does have to use some bushes, but his mechanics are very clean, probably much higher than Master Tier. His spam jumps are incredibly good, flipping in and out of the fight, never able to be locked down. By now, Rengar is actually strong enough to fight the enemy mid laner, but he's been spamming W and running away from them all game, so they don't really expect him to take a fight. But then when he finally uses a full burst combo on them and sprints off once again, suddenly they remember that Rengar's damage is very high, and by that point it may be too late. In mid game, Bushless Rengar goes into a side lane, but honestly he doesn't really need these bushes either, because this is where he starts using some super cool teleport tricks that give him free jumps at the start of every fight, even if there's no bush there. The first is simple, every time he teleports, he always wants to get 4 stacks from the wave. These last long enough for him to reach the other end of the teleport, and then immediately jump in with a root, setting up a pick to start the fight, which his team are then able to snowball to win the rest of it. He can also ult before teleporting, staying ulted during the teleport, and coming out sprinting at the enemy. What's an AD carry meant to do when they use all of their dashes, their flash, and it doesn't help, and they chase Ezreal down for a really great pick. But the coolest one of all, teleporting while sitting in a bush, gives Rengar a free jump when he arrives at the other end. So even if he's fighting in the middle of the lane, this Rengar still doesn't need bushes, as he can still reach his target. This strategy enables you to fight pretty much anywhere on the map, making Rengar much stronger as a champion, who would normally be limited to fighting only in places with bushes. But I would say the most interesting part of this whole style is the builds he can do, including his time waster Zonya's Anathema's Chains build. So let's just give this pick a quick rating and then get right to the builds. Rengar mid's main weaknesses are a weak early game, where enemies can poke you and get priority in lane, giving them a chance to roam and get their team ahead before you can really do anything. You are also a melee mid, who has good wave clear if you're alone, but terrible wave clear if enemies are nearby, since it's such short range. So if your team gets behind, it's going to be very hard to ever defend a tower. I think that this supportive, very hard to kill mid style is super powerful, and might even be good on some other champions. I'd even say that mid might be his best role in solo queue, since he's able to access so much of the map, and have a very high income, and it's also his hardest to punish role, because the lane is so much shorter than top, and the matchups are much less risky than the jungle. There are three builds for Rengar mid, one of them is boring, and two of them are interesting. The boring meta build that we all already know, buy Gore Drinker, play as a bruiser, jump around a lot using your healing, and try and kill people. It's a good build, but there is also Tank Killer Rengar, with Divine Sunderer, Blade of the Ruin King,
Lightning and Black Cleaver. This is a build we hardly ever see, but it's incredibly effective if the enemies have multiple tanks. But most interesting of all, his third build, the Time Waster build. Starting off normally, and then buying Zonya's and Anathema's chains. Zonya's is a really great item to stall enemies, keep Rengar alive, and then even jump away afterwards. And Anathema's is another great option to put on a fed enemy, so you can limit their damage output and stay on top of them, against some team comps like ones that have low damage. This item can just win the game, making Rengar impossible to kill in fights. This build really reminds me of SOFM Tank Rengar from Worlds, a pick that was literally played in the World Finals and then forgotten about. This may be the new version of that, so it's definitely worth a try. And if there is one super important tip for Rengar mid that our player wanted to share, it's this. The Empower W, a super important ability that you need to use perfectly to make sure you get the maximum value out of it. This means that if he gets CC'd and he's not at risk of dying immediately, he won't use it, he'll wait. This is because in some situations you can get CC'd, use your cleanse instantly, and then still take a big burst of damage as you're running away. Or alternatively, you can wait to take all of that damage, and then use your W to regen 50% of it, leaving the trade much healthier. Our player bans Azia most games, but Anivia, Aurelia, and Cassiopeia are also good bans. These are perfect counters to Rengar mid, because they can poke you down easily, and then trap you inside a CC until you die. But if you can avoid these, almost every matchup is fine, because Rengar's main goal is avoiding interacting with the enemy mid. He's especially good against burst mid laners, because Rengar's W is so good at regenerating the damage they do in their burst. You're not going to die to this, and then you can just get 50% of the health right back. For runes, this fleet footwork page is vital, taking second wind against poke damage to have more healing, or bone plating against burst champions to decrease the damage of their combo. Bushless Rengar has a YouTube and a Twitch channel, those are linked in the description if you want to see him play in high elo. And if you want any more Rengar, why not watch one of my other videos, both of which are still viable strategies. And don't forget to check out War Thunder. From epic multiplayer battles in the sky, to tank battles on historical battlefields, and even ship combat, War Thunder has it all. It's free to play and very friendly to new players unlike League, so please give it a try at the link in the description. Thanks so much for watching.